we're going to start a series of videos on phosphonium uh, chemistry and, and chemistry of phosphorus. Right now, in this particular video, we're going to talk about how you make phosphonium salts. Now this chemistry of phosphorus is used pretty widely and the reason it's used so widely is because these phosphonium salts are so easy to make. Anything that's easy to make, people are going to find uses for it. So as it turns out, the most common source of phosphorus that we're going to discuss is this molecule. It's called triphenylphosphine. Um, triphenylphosphine, people will generally write it as PPH3, that's phosphorus with three phenyls. For some reason, students love to write it this incorrect way, PPH3. Do not write it that way. If you don't understand, if that isn't obviously incorrect, think about it. Think about why P with a bond to PH3 is incorrect. Put other groups in place of the phosphorus and see how that doesn't make any logical sense as a chemical structure. So triphenylphosphine, as it turns out, the phosphorus is a good nucleophile. That's not, that's not a surprise. Uh, nitrogen is a pretty good nucleophile, and phosphorus is actually one below nitrogen, and because as atoms get bigger, they become a little bit more nucleophilic because of polarizability. This becomes a better nucleophile. It, it's a good nucleophile for SN2 reactions. So let's see an example of this. What we're saying is we can take an alkyl halide and treat it with triphenylphosphine. Phosphorus has a lone pair. It attacks, kicks out the bromide, and we get a, a fourth bond of phosphorus. So it's going to have a positive charge. I admit as an organic chemist, I hate having formal charges, but this, this is going to be a salt. There's no getting around it. We form this phosphonium bromide salt. It's a phosphonium salt. What kind of phosphonium? Well, it's a phosphonium bromide. The bromide is the counter ion. This chemistry is super easy to perform. You would literally take your starting halide, and uh, bromopropane, and uh, treat it with triphenylphosphine. You'd probably dissolve everything in a nonpolar solvent like benzene or toluene. You'd heat this up, cool it down, and out would crash these beautiful crystals. You'd filter them. They'd, be, they'd look beautiful by NMR. They'd be pristine. It's awesome. It's great, great chemistry. And of course, we can use other types of halides as well. Benzyl bromide, I mean, one of the great SN2 electrophiles known to chemistry. Kick that out. So, you know, we can use almost any, let's say, primary halides. Limit to primary halides. That's not completely true, but practically speaking, for the most part, you do this chemistry on primary halides. But these are really easy compounds to form, and anything that's easy to make, people are going to find out interesting chemistry to do with it because you tend to follow the easy chemistry and use it to do cool stuff.